I'm Shelby Bauer. This is The Sugar Scoop, and today I have a super exciting project for you guys. We're going to be making an awesome edible antique book. So if you guys follow me at all, you might have seen my entry into the wedding cake category at SoFlo Cake and Candy Expo 2018. And my favorite part of the whole cake was my book that I came up with and I'm excited to show you guys how to make it. I want to tweak it just a little bit for this video since I've already made just like a plain antique book. I want to make it like a, a book of spells, which I think will be really fun. Hints the dark, the dark lipstick today. I'm trying to get it in character for making something magical. Uh, so let's get started. If you like fun, magical book projects that are edible as much as I do, then like this video and subscribe to my channel where I'll be uploading new videos every Wednesday at 2. Super excited about these. These are from my web store, thesugarscoop.com. They come in packs of three. There's one that has no printing on it so you can draw on it yourself. And then the other pack has some small text on it. It's like about the history of uh, Latin or something. It's it just kind of generic text that would go with pretty much any cake. It's five dollars for a pack of three on my website and I would recommend using two packs to make one book but you can definitely make a book with just one pack. You need three quarters cups of cold water then I'm going to sprinkle four packets or four tablespoons of gelatin on top. It, I'm not very exact on how much gelatin I use. I just really want it to be nice and firm. Mix it together. Make sure all that white powder is soaked in with water. And then you're going to let it bloom. And by bloom, that just means let it sit for 10 minutes. Now that my gelatin has bloomed, I'm going to heat it in the microwave at 30 second intervals until it's completely melted. Scrape that scum off of the top and then add three tablespoons of glycerin. The glycerin is what is going to keep this mixture moist. So you want to make sure that you mix well. I'm going to be using a nonstick mat and that's just to help with easy cleanup and so the page comes off of the mat easily. Then I'm going to place my beautiful printed wafer paper book page onto my mat and get out my mixture that I made and then I'm just going to douse this page with the mixture, painting it all over it, making sure it's nice and soaked in. Now we're only doing this on one side, so make sure it's nicely coated. Then we're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes and then apply the cornstarch. So with the cornstarch, you want a brand new fluffy brush and brush off any kind of stickiness that's on the page so it makes it easy to handle. And then I'm gonna score the outside of the page with a bamboo skewer because I do not want to cut my mat, but I want it to lift off easy. So I turn it over and I repeat the same process on the opposite side. Now I have edible fabric made from wafer paper and this will be perfect because it dries really leathery. So now I'm going to repeat the same process for all my other pages. So now I'm just going to cut out my page. I sell these on purpose with the 
the white part still on because if it gets damaged in shipping or something, wafer paper can crack. So it's just protecting the printing part. So it, this is a good stage to cut out the page. The Unicorn Cake Curse Under the full moon, in a mixing bowl, add one part glitter, two parts scorn, one part cookie crumbles from last winter, one unicorn horn. Sprinkle under your victim's pillow. When they wake, they will be doomed to an eternity of unicorn cakes. Sounds like the perfect curse to me. <laughs> We've got to add our stars, not pentagrams, of course. I know they're not pentagrams, but this is a unicorn curse, of course. And on the other side, I'm going to draw the doomed unicorn cake. I'm going to add one more page for authenticity and I'm going to draw out the ingredients for the unicorn cake curse. So I'm going to start out with glitter. Those are my little glitter spots plus scorn, so a uh, unhappy face, a mad face, plus an old cookie crumble from last winter, of course. I need to stop saying, of course. Plus one unicorn horn. And obviously this unicorn horn is made out of fondant with a lollipop stick in it. It is not from an actual unicorn. Then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to put it down the middle and I'm going to fold my pages in half. This is important to do when your pages are still somewhat moist because otherwise they would break. So I just ran a line of edible glue down the center and I'm going to just keep piling on the pages, putting a layer of edible glue in between each one. So I'm making sure that they're sticking, you know, where the binding would uh, hold them together, uh, you know, if they were a real book. And I'm just going to keep going and layer all of them. Now I'm going to take a bamboo skewer and I'm going to roll the edges of my pages. Again, this is important to do when your pages are still somewhat moist because they will dry out. And what this does is it makes it look old and wrinkly but also helps add volume to it so your book looks a lot thicker and bigger than it really is. Now to let my book dry, I'm going to put it on an egg crate so that the pages are kind of um, pushed upwards. And you don't have to do this, but I'm going to burn my pages. It helps to incorporate the drawing a little bit, make it look a little bit older, and kind of crackle the edges. And there you go. There's a finished book. To see how I made the book binding, check back on my channel because I'll be uploading that video soon.